Hello everyone, welcome back to our course. Next, we are going to introduce Flink, which is a parallel computing engine that can be used in both stream processing and batch processing applications. Basically speaking, Flink is a stream processing computing engine, but just as the title suggested, Flink integrates batch processing and stream processing into just one computing engine. Thus, it can do both offline computing work like log analysis and real-time statistics like page click analysis. So where can Flink read data? Actually, there is no such a strict difference between batch and stream processing. And here, we just suggest several classical usage. For batch processing, typically, we read data in different formats of files. On top of that, it can also read data from relational databases, like from MySQL or Oracle, or read data from HBase, and some other data collections, like arrays or lists or tuples. As for stream processing, basically it can still read data in different formats of files, or we can use socket streams. Kafka RapidMQ or Flume for data transmission. Or you can even deploy some data sources on your own. And as you may have already known, in Hadoop, there could be many choices for data analysis. So here we draw a comparison between MapReduce, Spark, and Flink. Firstly, for data processing cases, MapReduce serves only batch processing because it is not fast. However, both Spark and Flink support both stream processing and batch processing. So Spark and Flink can be used in a lot more applications than MapReduce. And for stream engine, MapReduce has no stream engine. And Spark uses mini batch data streams to implement CUSI real time batch processing and stream processing. Or namely, it is in fact using batch processing ideas to deal with stream processing analysis. But Flink is a pure stream processing engine that uses streams to handle workloads, including data flows and SQL. So Flink is the fastest one here. Thirdly, data flow. For MapReduce, there are no loops in the computational data flow. But Spark used directed acyclic graph to manage the data flows in a highly efficient manner. Similarly, Flink uses controlled cyclic dependency graphs, which is also of very high efficiency. Fourthly, calculation model. MapReduce only supports batch-oriented models and it deals with static data in batches. Spark uses mini batch processing model, which is in fact a batch processing model. But the time delay can be controlled in sub-second level. Flink uses a pure stream processing model called continuous streaming model. This is event driven and deals with data as soon as the data arrives. Next performance. As we mentioned before, MapReduce is quite slow compared with the other two engines. And as for Spark, the stream processing efficiency is not as high as Flink. Usually, it requires second-level time delays. By contrast, Flink can support millisecond-level time delays, which is about 10 to 100 times faster than Spark in extreme cases. Finally, for memory management aspect, it is recommended that we can use YUM 
for memory management for all of these three engines. But in some cases, if we do not want YUM, then all of these three engines have their own memory management mechanisms. In general, MapReduce is not a good choice in recent life. But for Spark and Flink, actually, it depends on your business and your own preferences. Spark has longer development experience than Flink. So relatively, Spark is more maturely developed than Flink up to now. However, we can expect a better future about Flink because in general, Flink should be better if we keep putting more efforts to developing it. And here we can have a look at a simplified system architecture for Flink. So similar to the system architecture of Spark, the architecture of Flink could also be divided into three layers. The upper layer for different modules or libraries, the center layer for runtime, and the bottom layer for different deployment modes. Like Spark, we can deploy Flink in a single node system, a cluster, or on the cloud. And different modes require different tools for resource allocation as well as management. As for the center layer runtime, it is the core engine for Flink projects. We say that Flink supports both batch and stream processing jobs, and actually, Flink just uses this runtime to deal with all the tasks. So again, that is why we say Flink integrates batch processing and stream processing into just one computing engine. And above it, we can see two sets of APIs. Literally, the Data stream API is used for stream processing. And data set API is for batch processing. Different APIs provide services for different tasks, which has been shown here. But please pay attention to the table API and SQL. So you may have found out that both APIs support table API and SQL to deal with relational data. This is because data streams can be abstracted into unbounded tables and data batches can be abstracted into normal bounded tables. And please recall that in Spark, we mentioned Spark SQL. And actually, this table API has very similar functionality as Spark SQL just has introduced before. And maybe you are wondering, what does a typical Flink program look like? Here, we introduce that a Flink program contains three parts. Source, transformation, and sync. Like suggested by their names, source contains some operators to read data from external data sources. And transformation is responsible for data transformation operations, just as shown in our last graph. Sync is responsible for final data outputs. The three parts appears in almost all Flink programs, so if you want to write a program via Flink, you can design its structure according to this page. So that's all for Flink. In this chapter, we mainly introduced Flink as a computing engine for both batch processing and stream processing. And then we introduced the common data sources for Flink, a comparison between MapReduce, Flink, and Spark, the overall architecture of Flink runtime, and finally, three important parts of a Flink program. Hope you guys enjoy all the contents in this chapter, and see you in the next chapter.